I bore you after some time, so I think upon I will take over. Only a few things I wanted to share with you. Okay. One is you are in, you have been in college. Okay. There is a difference between the way things are done in a college and the professional software. And that is what you have to learn here because most of your stuff, at, at least on the MOOC side, will become public. Okay. It is no longer going to be a college project. Okay. The MOOCs projects that are there are certainly going to go live. Go live. Okay. So your stuff will be used immediately. Okay. So the, that difference you have to understand. So standards and all that. And that is why in the software quota I had put some 20% marks for quality and not a single one goes to the quality which I had given. Actually I had given a lot of samples. Okay. The one thing which Dr. Fatter told me, he doesn't follow it, but I followed it. But he was my guide in MTech. Okay. And uh, we take also we knew each other, but he was my guide in okay. When I went into the industry, okay, and he doesn't remember. He told me, everybody who likes to give me advice. I was a, first of all, I don't believe in what he said. We have our differences of opinion. I don't believe in looking at student behavior. Okay. Which is, what, which is one of the, see the problem is when a teacher is teaching you, okay, he knows you personally. He knows your behavior. The moment you go MOOC, you know, all of you know what is MOOC? Massive Open Online Courses. You have taken any? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Okay. The teacher loses contact with you. Okay. And since he loses contact with you, he would like to know how much time he has spent on each question, how much time he has spent on this. Okay. Right? So that is probably the reason why they are going and analyzing all the things. Accordingly, it's, it's immaterial. Okay. And I am a very extreme person, according to me, teacher is immaterial. Finally, we need to know how much of the subject the students have absorbed. If they have absorbed this thing and I have got, I never attended lectures in IIT. Fortunately at my time it was okay. I, I have had, but I have to meet the professors uh, when there is a lab viva. There is nothing I can do. Okay. <laughs> I had a professor meeting you. I have not seen you in class. Oh, yes sir, yes sir. Okay. Then there was one professor who asked me how many marks you got. So I told him how many marks I got and then it's okay. Those were the type of professors we had. Nowadays it's compulsory. Dr. Vata couldn't believe in it, but it's compulsory. Good, good professors will never believe in it. Okay. And there's a lot of anyway. So this tracking I don't believe in. Okay. So whether the according to me in the MOOC, whatever he is rolling out, I don't know why they should an insistence that you should look at uh, IIT professor's video. You can look at some other there are videos on every topic available everywhere. Okay, so there should not be any insistence. You should look at my book and learn from me. You will learn from somebody else. So. Anyway, that's apart. So you have to basically learn what is industry software, okay, and how to do that. The discipline of writing software. Okay. On the other hand, software is also an art. Okay, I never believed that software is basically engineering. That's why software falls through the cracks. Some people think it's engineering. Some people think it's pure art. Okay, but it is somewhere in between. You have to use engineering to build, okay, but finally you have to build a Taj Mahal. Okay. Right. So, Taj Mahal which will probably not become yellow over time because you use engineering principles. Okay. So that is one thing you have to realize that it is both an engineering art and the reason why I am calling it an art is, okay, what he said is when you write your first program in the industry, be careful because that will stamp you for life. Okay, and I was really scared. Okay, I, I believed what he said. He doesn't believe it, but I believed it. Okay. So the first program I wrote was well documented. Right from the beginning. And you know what was my learning? Between a good program and an excellent program is documentation. Okay. I was always a good problem solver, so that was not the issue. But the documentation raises the level of the program and it hardly takes ten percent. And so I have developed a habit of writing program by writing documentation first. It helps me in my thinking. Okay. Unfortunately, I'm not, uh, I don't spend too much time in design. I will probably take the uh, that software uh, engineering type of thing later on. That's why I said I'll come back to you. Okay. The other thing I wanted to share with you is 
education in my opinion is going through a uh, what do I call it? Real critical patch in India and a transformation everywhere else. Okay. But it's a critical patch in India because we have to change. Okay. We have brought our education to a very, very pathetic level. Okay. <coughs> Other people are following the same thing, but they have realized that they have to change and they are changing. They can change slowly, but we better change very fast because it's very, very pathetic, at least at a school level. And of course, at a higher level also, what the hell is okay. The pathetic thing, nature of education at a higher level is different. At the lower level, there is no education. At the higher level, there is low quality education at a very high cost. Okay. This is very bad. In school, there is no education. When I see people, Climbing, climbing up walls in Bihar okay, to pass a chit to the student. Okay. I was the only person actually there was a, I got an IIT Bombay forum where they how much cheating is going on. But I said they were perfect right to cheat. Okay. The schools are not telling them answers. The schools, the education system in the rural area has failed completely. Okay. And the reports which they say that a standard student cannot divide 50% of them. 50% of students in 5th standard cannot read English, cannot solve uh, two-digit subtraction problems. Okay, and the reason why they cannot two-digit subtraction problem for is single digit, this is enough. 10 minus 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They can do that. They don't know how to subtract actually. Okay. That's why single digit they can do, two digit they cannot do because unfortunately we have only 10. If we had 20, they would have done up to 20. <laughs> so I was actually not uh, really too disturbed. I think they have got every right. I was, I was going to send a mail to all my IIT batchmates. I did not send it. So I said, how many of you can put your hand on your heart and say that we have not used a cock sheet? Okay. We have used a, I have used a cock sheet almost every exam. Okay. I use it for a different reason. I said the professors do not have a right to expect me to know formulae. If I am coming out as an engineer, that time there was no internet, now it should be worse. If I am coming out as an engineer, when I start working as an engineer, the book is available to me. Okay. So if you are training me to be an engineer, why are you trying to find out whether I know the formula? Okay. So the only cock sheet I used was only formulae. I think I used it only once because the whole act of writing down the formula on a page was enough to keep it in my head. Okay. But I carried it as a mark of protest. Okay. So I don't think that is correct. You train me for something, you evaluate me on my uh, Anyway, that apart. Um, now MOOC, apart you are going to take one. Yeah. Okay. So she will talk about MOOC, then I will talk about a couple of projects I am running in the MOOC program. Okay. Yeah. Come. And any difficulty, you can always call me, uh, catch catch me, I am in the MOOC lab, sitting there in MOOC lab. You don't know where it is. It is next to your OSF, next to it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. One, one minute. All the, all the projects will tell you what the projects are. Okay. There will be various groups. Okay. We have a website where you can choose three of the groups. First preference, second preference, third preference. I will allocate you to the groups. Internal project allocation let the group take care. This is not what we did last year. This year, ah, this year we are in a mess. Okay, last year was run very well. We had all the projects done in January. This year we are in a mess because the whole of our uh, work is in a mess. Okay. We were supposed to be the MOOC program for India. Now the MOOC program for India shifted somewhere else, okay. but we are the first, so we are running our MOOCs anyway in the blended mode, so they will catch up whenever they want to catch up. Okay. There will be a lot of uh, you know, running around trying to realign projects etc. So there was actually no time to define projects for you, so we will go with the group, I like the group definition anyway. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, she has got something. As you know, I don't need uh, any, any help. I can talk on my own. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you want me to keep on talking? Yes. Okay, so let me talk about the two other projects I have. Okay. Um,
there is something called learning tool interoperability lti standards okay <laughs> learning tool interoperability standards okay what they have defined is there is a consumer and there is a pro uh, tool provider okay so if i have written some software and one of the projects is on quiz software it is a part of the school thing okay but it has got a lot of it is there got a question bank okay and the question banks can be transformed into a quiz so that is a tool which is already available outside the mooc platform outside any learning management system platform okay so what we want to do is implement the lti tool provider so this particular thing will implement the json that we talked about all the json format and there are two messages which have to be implemented with hundreds of these things so that the, and of course the software also has to be modified to support that okay so currently it is integrated into eka shiksha we have to make it separate make it usable by others we will use moodle as the test platform because i do not believe in the uh, mooc implementation of lti moodle has been old moodle is more used than lms so it will work so we'll take moodle and will integrate it with the ekshiksha question bank so that the faculty will be able to create add to the question bank you will be able to say select five questions from this question bank that i have added make it into a quiz okay or you can say the students can access all the question bank okay so there is a faculty role and there is a student role so that's what we will do okay that is one project the second project i have is similar to ldi it will it is my pet not done as yet so there will be some software development also apart from just changing it to converting it to an lti implementation but it will also be lti compliant okay it is an auto grader okay a portion of it has been implemented okay it is in okay both these things are java i do not believe in python unfortunately edx is done i do not believe in sorry it's not python i do not believe in uh, interpretive languages used on the server side okay because i think it is unnecessary right interpretive languages should be there on the client side because obviously you don't know what the client is okay? so that language will work on the client side since i know what the server is why should i go in for interpretation interpreting which is slow basically based on that okay and secondly you got all kinds of thing the maintenance is not good So if I make a mistake, if I add a column to a database, I don't know what code I have to change. I know know only at runtime. So there are a lot of problems, but that's okay. So all my things are written in Java. These are these are my projects. Okay. So auto grader, the concept is very simple because I go with simple philosophy. Another philosophy which I need to tell you. Okay. I do not care what you can do. Okay. Okay. And those people who have uh work with me on the software tools have probably realized that okay industry is specify do okay the person who does it better rise up to that thing and do it okay if he does not do it i'll move him to somebody else all right okay so i go with simple specifications generally the lot of people say okay this tool is there let me see what this tool can do and this is the problem let me apply this tool to this and i don't okay This is a problem. This is a solution implemented. I always say, as software, you are masters of the machine. You are not servants of anybody else. Okay. So what I can do means I am a servant. I am using this tool. I can only do this. All right. Okay. So concept of the auto grader is very simple. All the programs currently use what is called the multiple choice question format. Okay. Multiple choice question format means that the person is assessing you. Does knows nothing of the subject matter. If I am given a multiple choice question, I can actually take a Japanese fellow and see how proficient he is in Japanese language. ये question है उसका B answer है one mark देना minus one mark. Okay. So MCQ is not a method according to me good method of uh, assessing the subject. Okay. So in programming, who is the best assessor? the compiler okay he knows what all you have written and he can say whether it works or not okay so my idea is all my questions okay are actually full programs okay i ask the student 
to write a function. Write a function to say sort an array. Okay. So I'll define this is the array, this is the array. The student writes it. Now from the student, I have written the main. I have written a lot of code with the teacher has written. Okay. Including the correct sort. That is the thing I used in software quota, by the way. Same same principle. Okay. But not not the auto grader kind of thing. Okay. So I already have a sort function which is correct. I have the same data. I call my sort function which is the correct function. I call the student sort function which is the supplied function. I check whether they are they are the same. If they are not the same, I'll give one mark. No, 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 I give zero marks. I can give partial marks also. Okay. So the auto grader concept is very simple. Whatever answer the student gives becomes a part of the program. It gets executed, and I have got various schemes of checking whether it is correct. I I would be able to even give question like uh, define two integers, i and j. So he gets a box where he says integer i, integer j. If it is compiles, fine. Because I just need in the main a statement called i is equal to five, j is equal to five, okay. and I will know whether it works or not. Because if I define it as float i, if I set the warning level very high, the compiler will say there is a type mismatch. Correct. So that is the idea. It has been implemented by an intern earlier. It was he was a six-month intern. It is not in a state where I can do it because I have given six types of assessment which the teacher can specify. One is compile, whether it compiles, whether it compiles error warning free, whether it compiles. Uh, and a correct solution has been given okay if the teacher can give a set of input files okay and give a matching set of output files so that i can run the program on the whole set of input files and match with each one of them automatically and produce a result okay. so there was i think six assessments right six types six types of questions okay so we need to get that software up to the correct level and then convert it make it lda tool compliant these are the two projects I have, okay. And then the major project Aparna will tell you that is on the MIS. That is very important. Okay. No, it's on. You can ask questions at any time to anybody. And uh, the second thing is. The electronics people, okay. I think there are two groups which require electronics, okay, and they will tell you. So you better choose those. You choose software, you go into software, and somebody else will. I cannot guarantee meeting everybody's things. R language are you using? Yeah, the R scripting. There were some projects on developing R packages. Um, so would that come? Uh, would that come under the MI? Would, uh, what would that actually come under the data analytics part? That's the language. No, no. There were some projects. On that. From where did you hear this? No, it, it was on the data analytics. Like there were six groups that were provided. Six project groups. Why? Ah. Ah. Okay. Oh, Professor Nax. Okay, so that comes under the his group. Whatever he talks about. Then in the internal, you say I R R R karo, to go to the She has got four people. She has been sanctioned four people. As I said, it's a mess. Okay. So this was internally last minute. I asked what what kind of project because. For choosing, you need to know. So I don't even know what they are. I gave it to him. He put it on the website.
and since he asked that question and he answered the, both the answers let me tell you what they are language is immaterial it does not matter at all that is one of my projects which I am not going to implement with you in terms of I told Dr. Patak I am not going to use this particular batch to do my work except for auto grader application. Okay. And that that tool I want to develop and I will develop. I always do what I want to do. Right from the beginning. Is if I know one programming language, I can learn any other language. Okay. How do you? How did you learn any language? Tell me now, in the current world. Do you go to a language manual? That's what we used to do. Look at a language book. Yes, sir. Tutorial. Either it's a tutorial. Tutorial. Yes. No, not a book. There is a language book is different from a tutorial. Okay. Yes, sir. Which one is okay? Like it's not all. Like people always can PDFs for a particular language. My contention is in the current world, you people. I have learned from a book. Okay. So at my time, internet was not there. Okay. But for you people, you can learn any language through a set of probably 100, 150 programs. That is my contention. Okay. Some programs will talk about what are the types of variables. Some programs will talk about how to write a sort algorithm. You, If you know, say, language A, I will give you the language A program for sorting. I will give you a language B program for sorting. I will not open my mouth. I will not do anything. A good programmer will learn. Yes, that, that is my contention. And that what is damn simple. All I have to get is give, give a set of uh, some 150 programs which I think illustrate all the types of problems any language has that, that depend on the, what is the language, definition of variable, okay, whether type matching is there. These are basic concepts of a language. Take examples which do that. Put one set of examples up. Ask programmers to write in any other language I have done. No, there is no talk for it because it's four. Okay. Only four. So oh, she can't talk. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? All of you? No, I can make an audio. Uh, hi guys, my name is, uh, as you can see, Aparna Kantare. It is not Aparna ma'am. So during the course of next, what, three, four fortnights, it can you recall me? It should be Aparna, not Kantare. Yeah, yeah, no, not but Parna. I have to say my surname. Uh, so, so nobody will refer to me as Aparna ma'am. Three times you call me Aparna ma'am and after that I will not ever respond to you addressing me. So uh, I belong to the software development group of uh, IIT Bombay X, so which is an initiative which we have been running, uh, I believe, for about uh, close to two years now in IIT. I have been part of that for the last one year and a couple of months. Um, I um, just for completing my introduction, I have about uh, 14 years of uh, experience in the IT industry, and uh, I have joined IIT one one and a half years back and I have enjoyed my learning so far at IIT. To give you an introduction of uh, what is IIT Bombay X, so this is a site which uh, has been hosted at IIT Bombay uh, in January. So it's been in existence for uh, about four or five months. The initiative was started about a year back. The development, customization, all that was happening and then we deployed it. Uh, in January of this year. So this is what the home page looks like just to show um, how patriotic we are with the flag and everything. So a couple of questions that uh, you guys would want answers to probably. Uh, what is IIT Bombay X? Why do we need it? Where is it hosted? Who created it? Who is using it? You know the typical questions that come to your mind. So let's uh, go through the presentation and understand some of them. So it's hosted on IITBombayX.in. Couple of courses have uh, been hosted. Uh, Professor Patak's course being one of them. It's new in the sense that uh, we have only done like one semester of it. So um, the course uh, is hosted in two languages as of now. That's something which is really important. I mean, uh, uh, in India, maybe technical education is largely in English, 
but then if MOOCs has to reach nook and corner of the country, it has to support multiple languages. So this is like our first initiative where we've given a couple of courses in Hindi and uh, we hope to include many more uh, languages, Indian languages going ahead. Uh, at last count, uh, about 24,000 students attended the courses that were hosted on the site. Very enthusiastic response. Uh, what is IIT Bombay? So it's obviously not a complete development that we have done. It's a customized uh, implementation of what is called the Open EDX platform. So what, what is the customization that we have done? So we have provided support for multiple Indian languages. We have Indianized the look field and there is more work in progress happening as we go along. And whatever work you do here will become part of that uh, final implementation that uh, we are going to do. So what's the other important things that are going on? As I said, we want to support multiple Indian languages. To support those multiple Indian languages, we need a mechanism by which we will let translators or people who are specialists, not just in the technical subject, but who will take that course or that material to the vernacular students. So those kind of people should also have a platform to contribute their work so that the course can be made available in multiple languages. So that's one of the customizations, important customizations that we are doing. Uh, the blended mode of learning, we are supporting that. So MOOC is, uh, as you are aware, it, it's, it's online, it's massive, but there's no personal touch in it. So in a student college kind of an environment, the lack of human touch is something which may not really be very effective. So as, as the definition of education stands today, that human touch is required. Whether it's hand holding, whether it's mentoring by the mentors, whether it's your problem solving by your college faculty, that personal touch is required. So MOOC doesn't have that personal touch. We want to customize it so that we can provide a, 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 a person you can go to. That person could still be online. It doesn't have to be somebody standing in front of you. But still a go-to person in case you are facing difficulties. So we are trying to customize to provide that blended mode, mode of learning also. <coughs> Just a background about Open EDX for the sake of completeness. Open EDX uh, was started by MIT and Howard. They uh, made their platform uh, open source in 2013. And uh, they, they have received massive contributions from various educational institutions. And we are also being a consortium member with them. We are also contributing in whatever small little ways. Uh, a course on Open EDX typically consists of this. Uh, those of you who may have attended a course will know it's typically a short video, there are interactive learning exercises, there are various types of assessments, some discussion fora for you to internally solve uh, queries with each other, and there are some learning components. Some of the projects that you guys are going to do will uh, revolve around the learning component part of um, the open years. So these are uh, like the architectural pieces uh, that EDX is made up of. So there's a student uh, <coughs> application or the website that is something for the faculty to create courses. There is a discussion forum. There are uh, various learning components. By learning components, I mean that just a video or just some textual matter is not something which will attract student attention. I mean, in classroom kind of a scenario, that compulsory attendance will make you come to the classroom, like get up early morning and come to the class. But in a MOOC environment, what is it that will really get a person to like regularly attend the course or complete the course? So that has to be something which is very innovative, interesting that the faculty has to create so that you know the, the person is reminded that, okay, let me see what is the next thing that is there in this course. What, what is this interesting thing which will bring me back to the platform again and again to complete the course. So those are the learning components, add some animation, add some uh, online laboratories, add something, something which is not, you know, something that a student gets in a classroom maybe, something that is not available in other online courses. So those kind of innovations are the learning components. So some of you may be building some such innovations. Uh, and then there are uh, pieces like uh, stuff to talk to other applications. So if there is some course hosted somewhere else, I might want to get some part of it into my course. So I might want to integrate with uh, another LMS, for instance. Um, and there is uh, the last one, which is insights, which is the analytic part of it. 
uh, some of you asked questions about the um, R and all that. So yeah, so there is some very basic uh, uh, analytics which is built into the product. It's not really very good, so we would want to um, enhance it. <coughs> that enhancement portion belongs to Yes, yes. Yeah, so this is just an overview of the whole thing. Some of you will work on some of these with me and some with uh, other people. Uh, ideas architecture, I don't know. I want to bore all of you right now with all this. But what I just want to highlight, if it is uh, visible to anyone. Is it visible to the OK. So, so basically what this is showing is uh, So on this side, there is uh, the top left, there is the, the content management system, which is the piece where the faculty creates the courses. There is the learning management system, which is the piece where the student attends a course. The courses are all stored in databases, which is typically a Mongo database. The student information is stored in a MySQL database. The, that's this, the middle blue box. There is some material which is stored in XML. So some of the HTML uh, which is displayed to the student as course content is stored in XML or HTML format. There is analytics that happens on top of MySQL, so that this little blue box is the uh, database for analytics. There's the analytics services. This is the piece where the EDH platform communicates with external agencies. So there are queuing mechanisms with from, uh, whereby the LMS will post some messages onto a queue and the external application will pick up the message from the queue. Anybody familiar with messaging softwares? Queues? No one? Okay. So then I don't think it will make sense to anybody. But uh, okay, so that's an asynchronous messaging mechanism whereby you can post messages onto a piece of hardware. Some client will pick up that message, process it, give a response back onto the queue and then the LMS can again use it. So that's for interfacing with external applications. And uh, then there is the discussion forum. So the reason for including this diagram mainly is to show what are the pieces or what is the extent of involvement that we have in the customization. So except the discussion forum, I would say we have pretty much touched on everything. We have changed the content management system, the learning management system, the analytics, you guys are going to work on it. Um, the, uh, the database, the MySQL, the uh, MongoDB. So pretty much all of it. Okay, one piece we have not touched at all is the handheld device piece of it. So they've come up with an app for uh, EDX. So that's something maybe in the uh, future we'll look at it. Um, yeah, so this is just to show what is the uh, type of customizations that we are doing. Yeah, I think I talked about this. So the entire EDX source code is available on EDX platform. IIT Bombay X source code is also now available on Git. So you can just download it, install it, and get started. Those of you, I mean, it's really easy. You can just download it on your own laptops and get a, you know, sense of uh, how it is. Even those people who are not going to be working with me, I would encourage them to just install, create a course, because this is technology that's going to touch all of you guys. I mean, it's fine that we build it and we keep it, but you guys are the ones who have to use it. So I mean, it's, it, I really encourage people, or at least go to IIT Bombay X and whenever the next course comes up, just log in and you know get involved with uh, some of the courses. The 20, the 20 people have already participated. Which? Software oh, I see. OK. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So well, that's only 20, yeah. Um, yeah, so technologies that uh, are included in EDX. Anyone knows Django Python? <coughs> So yeah, Django, but it's open source. So any any open source technology, you name it, and pretty much it's there in EDX. So Django, Python, Maco, Template, Node.js, CoffeeScript, Ruby on Rails. This is not a comprehensive list. So I mean, it's like one page full of uh, technologies. But these are the main ones that we are using. Uh, the projects that we are doing, uh, Avinash has spoke about them. So one of them is really the report. And when we say reports, these are not to monitor student behavior. These are more of uh, 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 just gathering statistics to improve the effectiveness of a course. 
and uh, to uh, give operational efficiencies to the system administrators and other stakeholders to understand how is the system functioning and you know uh, uh, how is the bandwidth utilized and you know, those kind of support. So yeah, so this is not going to have any of uh, the Hadoop uh, uh, kind of uh, the, um, uh, technologies involved in this. It will be mainly MySQL and uh, reporting tools uh, in Python. Uh, the other one is LTI. LTI is very exciting because it allows you to talk to other applications and make a lot of things available inside EDX, which would otherwise have taken a lot of time and effort to build. So, so this is something, I mean, there is something called as the Ekshiksha, which is already uh, developed and available here. We want to integrate with, uh, uh, or rather provide a LTI provider on top of uh, Ekshiksha. I think sir talked about it, he knows it best, so um, I'll leave it at that. And the third one was for the auto grader, an LTI implementation for the auto grader. So what are the things that uh, I'm hoping that people who work with me will be able to achieve at the end of the internship? First thing is I would uh, hope that you understand and implement a complete software development life cycle which is not something that usually people get when they go for an internship. It is typically a very small module or you know something whose design has already been created and you are just told to do the coding for it. Here you will be involved right from the specification. The specification is of course there but then evolving the specification, doing the design, coding, testing the entire life cycle and providing a, making it a life in a production, not a production, but like a production like environment and even maybe I'm hoping do some support on top of that. The documentation of course has to be extensive so you will do that also. So that's something which within a short span of one, one and a half months if you are able to accomplish, it will give you a feel of an industry environment where you would Typically, you would like spend maybe two, three years before you get a chance to do, say, design, the lowest level uh, of design, or uh, at, you know, the um, um, extensive documentation. That's something which no programmer likes, I know, but then that's something which has to be done, and uh, you I mean, get to do all of that. So that's something I hope people will appreciate that you are going to get to do that in uh, this. Uh, you will learn to explore new technologies. Very few of you know Django Python. So those who are interested in or excited about learning a new language, you within one and a half months you will learn a language and become like experts in that language. Sorry. They better become they, an expert. Yeah, they will have to. They will not finish about it. So yeah, and then work on a production-like uh, environment, which again when you go for internships, they will not touch. Let you touch it. Uh, even the test environment, forget the production environment. Even here, we will not let you touch the production, but uh, you can at least get a feel of uh, what actually the system will be like. Show to the world this is what I do. Yeah, exactly. So that's really uh, an opportunity. Uh, the last one, I don't know how many are excited with that, but to make a meaningful contribution to the education <laughs> sector in the country, I'm hoping at least a couple of you find that exciting. So. That's what uh, it will be. If they don't find it exciting, God save their children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. On that note, I think I'll uh, end this presentation. Uh, just one or two uh, requests. Uh, Patek sir to, uh, talked about uh, uh, the other learnings. I mean, the technical thing, it's sort of like my responsibility to make sure that you will deliver because I am a stakeholder in that. But there are other learnings like the soft skills and all that. Uh, at the end of one and a half months when you guys will present, I'm sure everybody will say we learned how to work in a team. That's like the biggest thing we learned. But, but team learning also should not be team working, should not be taken to the other extreme where, you know, people are always working in groups. That tends to happen because that's what happens in college, like four, four, five, five people sitting on one machine and doing something. I don't know. <coughs> end of the week, no deliverable. So that's not something which will be appreciated here. Teamwork has to happen at certain points of time, but at other times you have to become individual contributors. Each one has to be an individual contributor. At the end of every day, each one has to deliver something. 
that has to be something which has to be a promise that you guys will make to yourself when you come here. We don't want like a week passing by and then nobody knows what's going on, not, no deliverable and then somebody asks for a status and people are like, I was stuck somewhere since the beginning of the week and I'm still stuck at that point. So how to get your problem resolved? Talk to your friends, okay, without disturbing them, talk to me, talk to anybody else, but the problems have to get resolved. You cannot sit on a problem for like days together. So that's, that's you have to take ownership of what you're delivering. Make sure that there are regular deliverables. There will be people after you with the like 30 that you will deliver, but then you also should feel that you have some skin in the door. So those are a couple of things. Enjoy yourself, I mean not that you should only work hard. But yeah, make make something meaningful out of this so that at the end of it you will also feel good that you are delivering a complete working system. I think that's all I have to say. Any questions? No questions. That's not good. Okay. Thank you guys. <laughs>